to the Acorn Cottage Knitting Podcast. My name is Jess. I'm a knitter based in the northwest of England in Cheshire. I live here with my husband Sam. Um, a little bit unsettled when I say that the iPad is precariously balanced. I mean it is standing on the thinnest edge with nothing behind it. I'm leaning against the glasses case. So if it all falls over at some point then I have to come up with a plan B. Um, you can probably tell that I'm in another room again today, slightly different background. Um, we're still moving things around in the house, decorators coming a week after this one. Um, so a bit of decorating going downstairs. Our new sofas have arrived, but my husband is currently doing an interview downstairs. So um, I'm upstairs. The sofa has now moved upstairs. Um, Shout out to my knitting friend Jess and her partner Simon for helping move the sofa because um, it was not necessarily what they were planning to do when they came over for dinner, but it worked, so thank you to them. I hope that you have got yourselves a cup of tea, a coffee, water, whatever it is that you normally have whilst you are watching these sort of things and you've got your knitting to hand. Um, so usual admin, you can find me so here on YouTube, um, also on Instagram and on Ravelry as Acorn Cottage Knits. Um, also apologies, other than the instability of things, um, picture and audio, last time I wasn't really 100% happy with it. Um, new iPad and the camera's in a different place so I keep looking in the wrong place. Hopefully I am looking slightly more directly um, towards you now but if not, sorry, give me time to get the hang of it. Um, and I've also tried with an AirPod as a microphone this time because I didn't, I thought it sounded rubbish last time basically. I will see at the end of this whether that's made any difference at all. If not, then we'll find a plan C. Um, I think between plans B and C, getting a tripod as well to stop this whole. So it's a box from when we moved into the house 18 months ago, still got books in, with a stool from the dressing table on top of the box and the iPad with its glasses case prop and the rest of it on top of that. So um, still working on the setup. So as I was saying, you can find me on other usual places, Acorn Cottage Knits. If you are not already a subscriber to this channel, then I'd be really grateful if you could um, just click the subscribe button. It just helps obviously algorithms and all of that nonsense. Um, so other than that, um, I think we'll just crack on. So I have got notes. I was so busy trying to set up the camera. I haven't even opened the notebook. I now have a cup of tea in hand. So this is, it's not going well. Um, I am not prepared for this. If it's any excuse whatsoever, I went to bed at about half past two this morning because we were driving back from Luton Airport. So I'm not good. So let me just check, uh, sorry, just reading the notes here. So yes, that's all the kind of introductory admin. Um, finished objects. First one I've not got with me. Um, it's already been gifted to my nephew. He is eight months old, maybe. I should know that, I think about eight months old. It was the Chevron baby blanket. The designer is Espace Trico. I'm butchering that French pronunciation, I'm sure, but um, it's that's spelt fairly phonetically based on that bad pronunciation, so I'm sure you'll be able to find it. Um, I'll try, as usual, to put information and links where possible below, and it is also on my Ravelry. Um, I don't know whether I will have done it before this point in my rambling, but if not, then here is one I made earlier. A picture of the um, the finished blanket which as I say has been gifted away so you will see from that it's blue and white stripey I'm trying to remember without a picture of it in front of me now so it's got a like a chevron pattern as the name would suggest um, I've started it with white stripe and then blue stripe then white then blue and so on and so on but the blue there's four different kind of bluey tv colors that alternate as they go through um so sorry i'm just falling down in this sofa it's very squishy um yeah i 
did that with the four alternating blues, went through each kind of set of the four blues three times. I wanted to finish with a another white row at the end, but I was about four grams short and I just I wasn't in the mood for yarn chicken and then ripping it out, so yeah, didn't do that bit. Um the yarn is another good thing. Really unprepared for this, I'm sorry. Right, the yarn I used was Stylecraft Special Iron Weight. Um, I don't know that I've actually got all the tags to list the different blues I used, but if I did, then I'll put them below. But I basically just picked four that I liked the look of. Um, sorry, my watch is giving me notifications from Duolingo now because I've decided to start learning French. Um, but, um, sorry, losing my train of thought. If I can find the blues, I will say what they were, but just generally I picked four that I quite like the look of. I had loads of different colours from when I very foolishly thought it would be a good idea to do a temperature blanket, um, but I ended up making it massive, like it probably would have been a double bed width and the knitting going there and back so that it, because um, it was in garter, and it was, the whole thing was a disaster. I got maybe a month, month and a half into it. Um, and we don't speak of that anymore. So the yarn was repurposed. I had to buy the white and maybe one of the blues just to add to the kind of colour palette. I think that's pretty much all there is to say on it. No, that's, that's not all there is to say on it. So from the picture, um, you can see where the chevrons run up on it. Um, it's a free pattern as well, so I'm not really giving too much away, but you kind of have your increases and decreases to give you that chevron pattern and it kind of looks like there's columns where you've had that line down with the increase or decrease um so you have like one increase one decrease per column i think from memory again i've not got the picture in front of me so i might have got this wrong but i think i had kind of three of these chunky columns in hindsight i should have probably done it as four but then i would have definitely needed more white um i should have had enough of the blues i think um, I think just because of the length that I did it, it does look a little bit skinny. Um, the other thing I actually learned about it as well, um, so it's an acrylic yarn, just cheap and cheerful stuff. Turns out you can sort of block acrylic with a hairdryer, which was completely news to me. Um, I was going down to my mum's and wanted to be able to leave it there for my sister because she was then going to be up there soon. And, that's kind of a, a midpoint for us. So I thought, get it finished, get the ends woven in and take it down there. Um, but I was in a bit of a rush. I wouldn't have had time to wet block it. Um, obviously with acrylic, it's absolutely soaking for days and um, I could not be bothered with that. So I was Googling to see whether I could steam block it with like the steam spray off the iron and something came up saying that you could use a hairdryer. So I wouldn't say it was brilliant for kind of stretching it out, but the chevron shaping, because you start that straight away, so the top and bottom ends um, have that sort of shaping on it. It was quite good for getting those like points, the peaks on it defined, um, just kind of pin it down, heat it up with the hairdryer, then let it cool. Um, I guess because acrylic is basically plastic, you're kind of heating the plastic and letting it cool into a new shape. So um, that was new to me. Uh, it may be something that everybody else is well aware of already, but yeah, that is what I learned. Um, what else? So I'm pretty sure that is now everything to say on the baby blanket. I've covered more time than I thought I would do on that. I thought it would be like, here's the picture and then moving on. I've got one other finished object, which is a pair of socks. I might have to put this tea down in a second, but I've not actually got a side table in here. So we'll see how we go. Um, so these are the socks. It is the, gosh, what is it? It's the Fairground Sock Pattern by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. So let me see if I can bring it a bit closer for you. Hopefully you can see there, it's kind of a wavy shape with a bit of uh, lace in it as well. Um, 
and it's up to the toes. So if I tell you about this one, I'll just pop it down so I don't throw tea everywhere. Um, so fairground socks pattern, Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. Now I have been saying in the last couple of episodes that I've had self-striping yarn in my stash that I wanted to use, but I wanted it to go on something slightly more exciting than just a vanilla sock. Vanilla socks are great. I love a good pair of vanilla socks. I've done them in self-striping before and they are fantastic. However, I was getting a bit bored of knitting them. Um, right, let me see if I can put this tea down without causing chaos. I'm really worried that something's gonna go drastically wrong um, with this whole contraption. Uh, but, oh well, hope you enjoyed the view of my seaming. So, socks with the self-striping yarn. And I was saying about needing a pattern on some of the previous episodes. Now, after episode 10 went out, um, a very lovely lady who is called Teresa, she has the Instagram account of Ravens Rock Knits. Um, she reached out and told me about this pattern. And um, next thing I knew, there was a message on my Ravelry inbox saying that the pattern had been gifted to me by Teresa. So absolutely, you know, so generous and was not expected. And I'm really, really grateful for it. So thank you so much, Teresa. Um, I loved knitting the pattern and I think I'll definitely make these again. Um, probably in another self-striping at some point. So it's a fantastic pattern and I was just really lucky to have been sent it. The cuff, I was going to call that a toe then, the cuff, heel and the toe are done in minis. I think they were 10 gram minis. Now I had a set of five minis, kind of pinks and purples, in my stash for a while. Um, Lucy from the This Danny Knits podcast gave me the set of them when I met up with her last year. Um, I probably mentioned before she lives quite close to um, a family member so I just when I was out visiting then also arranged to meet up with Lucy went to a very nice garden center excellent cake and she was very kind and gave me that yarn so it's been sat in my stash and it just it went really well with the colors so the purple is slightly different to the purples in there pink again is slightly different now this one is probably the closest match to the kind of curly color but it's not identical so they kind of fit with the general theme of it, but it's not absolutely bob on, which I'm quite happy with. Um, I am also pretty pleased if I just put these together. Look at that, that is so satisfying. Um, pretty decent matching. Um, if I stop stretching them up the thing, then they do show that they match. So I did, oh, this is testing me now. How many rounds did I do on the leg? Probably about, I, I don't even know. Let me have a look. So I've been using um, Knit Note for keeping track of patterns recently. And I do have, yeah, I have it in here. Did I write it down? So I did 67 rounds on the leg, there we go. Um, trusty pattern records to the rescue. So 67 rounds on the leg, it will be a 15 round cuff because that's what I normally do. Um, I do a German twisted cast on. Um, yes, 50 rounds, 67. Um, the reason it's 67 is because that took me to pretty much the end of this light pink stripe to then put the heel in and the pattern asked for a different heel which one was it? I think I want to say it was called a butterfly heel yeah you could also do heel flap and gusset if you wanted to the butterfly heel I started um but I think I did the first part of it it looks quite similar to a shadow wrap in that you kind of go to here and then back out started that first bit but then differently to the shadow wrap heel you then need to pick up stitches going back down this kind of mid part, um, I don't know what you'd call it. Um, I was away, we went down to Twickenham to watch some of the rugby and 
trying to learn a new heel when you are um, on a train is not going to necessarily be the ideal option. I think maybe I was at my mum's on the night of it and then after that. Anyway, these did not take me long at all to knit. Um, I put the start date in this pattern keeping record as well. So I started them on the 9th of the 8th, finished them on the 21st of the 8th. Um, so it was that kind of middle weekend, I think, was when we were away, got up to doing the heel and tried it, didn't go well, couldn't be um, trying to learn a new one whilst we were not at home, not kind of sat able to concentrate. So I've just put in a shadow wrap heel, um, done my usual foot length, which for me is 72 rounds. And then the toe on this one is an umbrella toe. Um, it's a new toe style to me, um, but I do actually really like how it looks. Um, it's quite satisfying how it's kind of got the neat decrease lines going through it. Um, so that is the pair of socks. That's probably everything I wanted to say about the pattern. The yarn, um, the main yarn, then I've talked a bit about the contrasts, it was uh, from the Yarn Badger and I've got the, um, the yarns here, so uh, not technically a project bag but a uh, nice cute little elephant bag, it's an Elizabeth Scarlet um, pouch. So from the Yarn Badger, hopefully that is showing, um, press sticks all over it. So the colourway is called Hope. It's a superwash BFL 25% nylon, uh, 100 grams to 400 metres. So I bought this at Spring Into Wool um, 2023. It was towards the end of the day that I bought it. I kind of thought if there was budget left, then I'd get myself a nice self-striping skein, um, which is what I ended up with here. Generally speaking, perfectly lovely to use. Um, if I'm being really slightly fussy, um, some of the purples especially, I just find that the colour hasn't taken fantastically all the way through the yarn. Now this is not criticism because I do not know the first thing about dyeing yarn. I imagine it is not easy to do um, you know, hand dyed self striping uh, or hand dyed of anything. So absolutely not me um, being a critic where I don't have a clue what I'm talking about, but just from a consumer point of view, um, the, the last self striping I used was one of the Giddy Yarns, like Gobstopper ones, and that was just absolutely glorious the whole way through. So if I was going to spend the money on it again, because they are slightly more expensive to get hand dyed self striping, I would probably lean towards the Giddy Yarns but that's just entirely personal preference and you know absolutely nothing wrong with this they look fantastic um, and I'm really pleased with it so as I mentioned the pattern for making these was really really kindly sent to me by um, the lovely Teresa so I'm going to be doing a sort of a giveaway to pay it forward and um, basically I was planning to buy myself the pattern anyway once I saw it before it turned up in my inbox it was one that I saw and went yep yeah, that's right up my street so I still want to buy the pattern obviously I don't need another copy of it so I want to pay that forwards to one of the lovely viewers um, so if you would like to make your own pair of the fairground socks um, just comment anything any comment is uh, eligible for this. Um, ideally if you are on Ravelry but if you are not then I will find another way to get the copy of the pattern to you so it's not restricted that way. Um, it's just that that's the default way that I would know to get the pattern to you but don't worry about it we can sort it out. Absolutely any comment um, just down below say hi, tell me what you're working on, uh, tell me your favourite colour, tell me if you like the fairground, literally anything, just comment below and I will then pick a winner for uh, next time I record. I'm aiming for about once a month at the moment. So I think that, yeah, about once a month. So maybe late September, it's the 1st of September today. I don't know if I said that, um, but that's probably about your time scale that you are looking at. 
so yeah that is going to be the fairground socks and moving on from those oh sorry about that um bruise showing i was out paddle boarding um and i think carrying the boards just bashed up my arm a bit so moving on from that and just checking my notes um, i'm going to risk having some more tea without causing everything to fall over safe whips is the next part of this um, you do not want to see the state of the sofa next to me with all of the project bags it's um it's a mess but i think i found the right one this one is just a fairly nondescript bag i think this would have been when i ordered from the camel's yarn you get it in a, just a nice little drawstring canvas bag which is a nice touch so this is the Broken seed stitch sock. Um, I've done one of them, so it's a it's a half finished object. So let me just switch it over and put it on a blocker because that will probably make it look slightly more exciting. Um, there we go. So that is the first of the socks. Uh, you can see it's kind of all over pattern around the leg, and then foot is half pattern, half plain. So this is another free pattern and I think I said in the last month's one who designed it, so Hannah Levanyemi, apologies again for the pronunciation, um, free pattern and really nice to do. I've used Phil Kalana Rebetta on the um, cuff, heel and toe, just a plain white one I think, um, and then you use that as the kind of the white colour that runs throughout. And the coloured bit is from Olan Mills, which no, the um, the yarn band is inside the ball at the minute so, and the cake, so I'm not going to try and dig that out. Um, I did say a bit about it in last month's podcast, so I won't go on about it too much. Um, just to show this is the finished sock. So I've done 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 20, 30, 40. 60 rounds on the leg um, and I've done a 15 round cuff with a uh, gem twisted cast on, shadow wrap heel and then uh, just the normal, um, I don't actually know what I would call that toe, it's just like the you decrease every other round toe, um, is it wedge toe? I don't think it is, anyway a normal toe, normal to me. Um, I think that these, it kind of looks like scales um immediately i was thinking mermaid but then i showed it to my sister and she said it looks like the rainbow fish and i'd get what she's saying with that if you remember the book um and the fish had that shiny scale so it is quite sort of rainbow fishy uh, but i really like it i need to get the second one done but i stole the needle from myself to do other knitting and um, basically i had just been on holiday and i wanted to take certain things on a holiday it was less exciting to take a half done pair of socks when you could start shiny new ones so um that yeah needs doing but i need to um reclaim the needle it's a 2.5 chalgu 9 inch circular that i use it would have been the same for the um the fairground socks as well and then i use um 2.5 dpns from knit pro to do toes um I think that's pretty much everything I need to say about this. Um, it will come back out again as a finished object at some point when I reclaim the needle. So uh, we will leave that for the time being. Um, I will just show you the cake top yarn again because it is just really pretty. So this is the one from Olan. Um, unfortunately, I don't think that they are producing yarn anymore, which is a shame because oh, it's just beautiful. And you can see these sort of emeralds and purples and stuff just popping through so it's gorgeous gorgeous yarn and i think if i remember right it's got some cashmere in it yes yeah, so it was 80 percent superwash merino 10 percent cashmere and 10 percent nylon and oh, you can tell from the softness that it's got that cashmere in it is so nice and squishy um so if you see stuff like that coming up from these stashes or anything then get your hands on it because it is absolutely gorgeous um so as i mentioned been on holiday 
I got back at half past two this morning. Uh, so it's Friday the 1st of September at the moment. Um, so we went out to join my family in France just for three nights. Um, just we've had other stuff to fit in as well. So we couldn't manage to go for longer in the times that they were there. But it was really nice to just have a couple of days. Um, so we were in Annecy, which is uh, sort of around the Alps, Swiss side of things. Don't ask me more about the geography than that. Um, I flew to Geneva and my dad picked me up from there. So anyway, we had a bit of kind of rest and relaxation. The weather for the first day or so was not fantastic, but still enjoyed it and uh, plenty of knitting time. So I had two cast-ons, which I took for holiday. Again, not a proper project bag. I think this is a makeup bag from Superdrug but it's a decent size. So basically it was whatever I could fit in here was coming on holiday with us. Um, they had fairly restricted baggage allowances. So um, if it didn't fit in here, it couldn't be knit on. But I did manage to take two projects. So the first one, um, I have just got onto the heel. Now, bear with me, I'm just going to see if I can get this onto a blocker without causing complete and utter chaos because it is on a nine inch circular needle um i just hold the ends of that and see whether that's gonna go oh this is nerve-wracking maybe i shouldn't be doing this maybe it's all gonna come unraveled and then i'll be really disappointed yeah that's not happening okay scratch that i will just put it on the toe of it so you can see and move all of my ends out of the way so this is, uh, hopefully you can tell from that actually, showing it that I'm quite pleased with that. So I'm still not anywhere near a pro at colour work. I've mentioned I want to make the uh, Hinterland sweater. Jennifer Steingas, I think, is the designer, which has got like, a really nice colour work yoke on it. Um, so I thought best option would be practice colour work on some socks first. This pattern is called Flamboyant Flamingos and it's from the sock set of YR Flamingos Pink from Stone Knits. Um, so it's got this colour work section all the way around the leg. I'll take it off there now because I'm tangled. Yeah. So, colour work down the leg, so many ends. Um, and then I've put in a shadow wrap heel there. This is another pattern where I've just substituted in a shadow wrap heel because I can quite do it with my eyes closed, but I, I know what I'm doing, I don't need to follow a pattern. Um, the holiday was camping. Um, when I say camping, like they do it in luxury. So we were in the tent, they were in the caravan, um, go to some families that we've grown up with and is you know, you will not starve, you will not go hungry, people are there to give you food and wine and like so much cheese and wine, so much good food, just basically it's very luxurious camping. Um, but being camping, we were outside when we could be, including in the evenings when it was starting to get dark. Um, oh, that's interesting, it's just said my AirPods are connected, I don't know when they disconnected. I'm really worried now that this hasn't been recording the whole time. Um, right, I'm really hoping that it was recording. If the sound has been hit and miss, I'm sorry, but I'm half an hour in, I'm keeping going. So yeah, as it was getting darker, it was easier to be doing what I knew. So I obviously couldn't do the colour work in the dark, um, but the rest of it, um, as I got to kind of pass that bit and onto the heel, that was easier to do with an evening when I didn't need to watch it. So that will continue now um, onto the foot. Hopefully that foot will be quite quick and easy and I'll just pop a normal toe on. I think it's got a tiny bit more colour work before the toe. Um, I'm not sure whether I'll be bothered to do that because it just gives me more ends to weave in and I hate doing ends. So. Um, anyway, I'll get that done and get the second sock done. Once you've finished them, you then do some duplicate stitch to add faces. 
and beaks onto your flamingos. Um, but yeah, holding them like that, I am actually really impressed with how that has turned out. So, uh, well done me. No, I'm not that big headed, sorry. Um, I'm just generally new to colour work and it looks better than I was expecting. So there we go. The yarn on that one is somewhere. It's the Serda uh, Country Classic 4 ply, which is a 50% wool, 50% acrylic. Um, yeah, not a lot else to say. The colour is 963. It's this sort of duck egg blue. Cannot for the life of you tell, cannot for the life of me tell you what I used on the pink. Um, it's been in stash for as long as I can remember. It might be a West Yorkshire Spinners one, but I don't know. It's been in stash without a label on because I started things with it and then come them off. So I don't know what it is, but I didn't have enough left in any, or enough in any minis to guarantee being able to do all of the colour work section. Obviously didn't want to risk um, doing the majority of the colour work and then having a tiny bit uh, where I didn't have the amount to finish it. Although I'm not doing that bit on the toes, maybe I would have been all right. But anyway, so just a random ball of pink yarn. And actually, I think it's quite a flamingo-y colour. It's probably looking a bit more flamingo-y on the screen than what it looks like in front of me, but we'll, we'll roll with it. So that is the first of my holiday cast-ons. Um, the second one, so I should say again, that's 2.5 uh, 9-inch chagos. Uh, that's basically my go-to for a sock. Um, Second one, again, I'm just going to see if I can tuck the end of it into a blocker just so you can see the pattern. Um, it's another sock and yeah, I'm not going to push it on too far because I don't want it to fall off. But um, there you can see how it's opened up a lot more. So this is the Follow Your Path. Um, pattern which is by Kay Litton who is better known as the crazy sock lady. Um, I don't really know why I picked one of her patterns. I've been quite um, going through a bit of a phase of enjoying her um, YouTube channel recently so yeah just picked one of her patterns. There was a couple I could have gone for. I basically I didn't want a completely plain sock. I don't know why I'm knitting that now sorry put it down because otherwise I won't be able to concentrate with you guys. Um, I didn't want to just do another vanilla sock but I didn't want anything too complicated. It is a paid for pattern so I can't tell you too much but um, it's obviously a variation on ribbing and um, it's so it's a four row repeat I think I can tell you that much. Um, so it's fairly easy to memorise and do when you're kind of sat chatting to people. Again it wasn't too easy to do when the light started to fade but during the daytime just sat around chatting and relaxing that one is um, again great so the pattern asks you to do a slightly longer leg than, and a longer cuff actually than what I would normally do so I'm going to go for it um, and just do it to the measurements that it says it also says to do an eye of partridge heel flap which I have not done before I don't normally do a heel flap and gusset um, nothing against it but sometimes I just find it easier to get the kind of quick shadow wrap here out of the way and then you know if it's a vanilla sock just smash on with the um the rest of it but I think this has got a bit of pattern in it anyway I won't mind so much sort of taking a bit more time to do a new heel and I will just learn from my previous mistakes and make sure that it's a time when I can sit and concentrate on what I'm doing rather than ending up uh, kind of fobbing off the heel. So that is that pattern. The yarn. Um, so this is what we've got and it is from Blue Fern Yarns. Never know whether that shows the right way for you or not but um, so hand dyed in Norfolk and the colourway is Antarctic the Platinum Sock 4 ply, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, uh, 425 metres per 100 grams. If you've not come across Bluefin yarns before, then do go and check out the yarns that she dyes because they are absolutely gorgeous. Um, I bought this one at the Warm Monty Show 
last year's 2022 um, and originally I was planning to use it to make the sock pattern that came in the show guide um, but I came I got the show guide out again a couple of weeks ago and looked at it I just wasn't loving the pattern and I figured I'd end up not really enjoying making the socks so although I had been saving this I changed my mind and decided to just do something different and I'm normally Oh gosh, AirPods connected again. I don't know what is going on with this. Um, again, apologies if the audio is all over the shop. Uh, where was I? Yeah, wound into a ball like this. Normally I will cake it. However, I was a bit disorganised for our holiday and um, I just wanted to get things, basically get going on holiday. So I wound this in the car had the open skein around my knees as I sat in the passenger seat and my husband was driving us down to Luton. So that's why it doesn't look quite as pretty, but you can still see all the nice colours, um, basically all the different kind of blues of the sea. I think she had a couple of different kind of sea themed ones, uh, or like oceans at that time. I've no idea whether she still has those in the shop, but um, they were lovely. And it's got a little penguin stitch marker, just because that was at the top of the pile. Um, so that is my other sock. Where else can we go? Let me just put a few things back in. No, they don't live in there. Back in their bags before there is complete and utter chaos and I lose everything. So last two bits in the whips, I'm gonna do it fairly quickly. Just um, getting on a bit in this, I don't want it to be horrendously long, um, especially if the audio has been completely useless and I have to do it again which I'm really hoping I don't so you might recognize this one as I'm getting this out this is my anthology throw um, so I have been doing a bit of work on this it doesn't look massively different to last time because it is so big then it just takes forever to do a round so we drove up to a wedding in Preston um, just before going on holiday and it took me the entire trip up to the wedding of like 45 minute drive to get one round done there are over a thousand stitches per round where I'm up to now so it doesn't look like it will obviously at the end it'll be a big open shape but this is what we are working with it's my truly hooked Disney advent from last year I think I've got about six colors left as I've said before I am trying to use up all of every color so it will be bigger than the final pattern um, but that's just a quick update on that one and um, oh, it smells like the perfume I wore to the wedding. That's what we have got so um, I'm going to try and press on with that a bit more. It was in a little, kind of, I don't know if they're raccoons or red pandas but a cute little project bag which I think was the Woolly Tangle. Have I made that up? No. Yeah from the Woolly Tangle. I would have bought that at a yarn show at some point but I can't remember which one. And we'll try stuffing that back into its bag later because it is enormous. Um, anthology through then is, gosh, what's her name? I'm going to have to click back through my notes. Bear with, talk amongst yourselves. Uh, so it's Curious Handmade, which is Helen Stewart. And it was part of Knitvent from um, 2022. Other than that, then I think that's, well, yeah, nothing more to say on that. Final one of the whips. Now it's not a load to say about this, um, it's just in a wool warehouse bag at the minute. So I've talked about this before, it is a jumper that I'm making for my brother and it is basically an absolute nightmare. It's not anymore, I just, I fell out with the pattern on the, um, the raglan and just for one reason or another it's not been getting on very far. Now I am making progress, I have done quite a lot of the body. I think there's maybe another 10 centimetres or so left to go. Um, so the reason I'm showing you this now is because I would like you guys to keep me accountable on it basically. So I'm going to try and work on it as much as possible and see where we're up to by the next podcast. Um, oh gosh, AirPods connected again. I don't know what is happening. I'm so sorry. Um, right, I'm going to put a pin in this. I thought I had a stitch marker to hand, but I don't. So as soon as I finish recording, I'm going to put a stitch marker 
a progress keeper, sorry, in exactly where we are on here. And then we will see where I get to by next time. So it's the jumper, I've talked about it before, Stobrus, I think it's called, I can't pronounce that. Um, it's a drops pattern, I'm making it for my brother. And we are going to try and really crack on and get that one finished. So I'm gonna put that away now. Um, and I am gonna try and speed up a bit because there's a few more things I want to talk about before I go. Um, so, in terms of what I've been watching lately, just to go through a couple of podcasts. So, as I mentioned, I've been quite um, into the Crazy Sock Lady podcasts again. I go through phases with those. Um, obviously, there are a lot of them and they're fantastic, but sometimes I just dip in and out. Other things take my fancy, uh, but I have been really enjoying those again recently. Um, and I think because I've got a bit of kind of sock mojo at the minute, it's been quite nice seeing as she's been working through the back end of Summer Sock Camp. Uh, I haven't put any of my socks into Summer Sock Camp, I've just been knitting them for the enjoyment of it. I've also really been enjoying a new podcast, which is Niff Knits, which is a lady called Jen. Uh, episode two has just recently come out and um, she made some gorgeous things. It's just an absolute delight to watch. So I'm going to, if I remember, link her channel down below. Um, so do go and check her out. Other than that, um, so Martin, who is Welsh Tenor on Instagram, and it's the Nitsy365 blog. Um, I've really been enjoying his Sheep to Skein series. Um, again, I highly recommend it if you've not looked at that yet. Um, so it's basically going from the yarn starting on the back of a sheep um, through its, this kind of the shearing process and then getting sent off to be spun. And then later in there, I think he's doing one where it's getting all dyed up. So he's kind of doing it alongside a local Welsh dyer. Um, so yeah, that's been really interesting just to get a bit more of the background. Um, and he's also got a sub stack that's just come out, which has had some really interesting things on it. Um, I've not finished the latest one yet, which is talking about the West Knits um, cow. Um, I'm not doing it this year and I'm going to stick to that, I think, I hope. Anyway, finally as well, um, my all-time favourite, the absolutely lovely, lovely Ruth of the Ruth Loves to Knit podcast. Uh, she's got her latest episode out, so I will be going to watch that shortly. Um, we're not watching a great deal on TV at the moment. Still working my way through Grey's Anatomy, um, but nothing else major, I don't think. I think Bake Off's starting again soon, so that's going to be a good one to get on with. And then the other thing I just wanted to mention was about some books, because I have mentioned about this before and some people um, have enjoyed it. I personally love hearing book recommendations and things. So I've got a couple of finished books. So I mentioned a little while ago, I was reading The Hunting Party. Um, again, apologies if that's showing back to front for you. Um, I'm not sure. So it's The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. Um, quite enjoyable, probably not one I would read again, but enjoyable for a once through. Um, I do like kind of thriller books, so um, I think I got that one in the Oxfam bookshop. Next one I finished, I got this for holiday and I think I started reading it on the way home or on the last day anyway, yesterday. Uh, so I read the entire book in a day. We did have quite a lot of time to kill at the airport. But um, so it's The Woman Who Lied, which is by Claire Douglas. Um, she's also done a couple of others that I've read. So The Couple at Number Nine and The Girls Who Disappeared. I've read both of those. Um, it was a really good book. Um, obviously the fact I read it in a day tells you that I was enjoying it I think I was properly hooked into it and I would really recommend it if you do like thrillers um so yeah I can't really tell a lot without giving spoilers but it is it's just really good and it's really clever how it's written as well so um yeah that would be high on my recommendation list we've also finished in the book group that I do as a kind of sub part of the knitting group that I'm in or the knitting friends um, we finished listening to The Bright and Mermaid, which is Dorothy Coomson. I think the second half of that was good for me. Um, the first half I didn't love. Sometimes it just takes a while to get into audiobooks, I think. Um, 
but I think the general consensus in the group was that the second half was uh, far more gripping. And then I'm working through, I've got another audiobook on the go for the book group, which is None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell. Um, I really enjoyed when she did the, so the family upstairs and the family remains, I think they were called. Um, so they were fantastic books, same author and really enjoying it so far. I thought I'd get through more of it on a holiday, but um, just sat chatting with people. There's quite a large group of us, um, 10 of us at some point. So, you know, sat up with an audiobook is maybe a little bit antisocial. Um, so I will be pressing on with that now. Um, but oh, what, else, what else was I going to say about that one? Oh, yeah. So one of the, um, the voices in it is, oh, what's she called? Nicola Walker. Um, so if you are in the UK, if you have watched Unforgotten, which I think was ITV, or if you have watched The Split, uh, which was a BBC one, she's in both of those, she's a fantastic actress and I think she's just, whatever she's doing, she's, she's very believable, um, so her voice is very kind of believable as that role in the book. Um, and I'm also reading a book called One Night on the Island by Josie Silver. Um, this was one my sister has lent to me, more of, not to be disparaging about the author, but more of like a girly trash book. And I don't mean trash because I couldn't write a book. I just mean um, it's light-hearted. It's a rom-com book, basically. Um, a chick flip book, maybe I should say, because I'm not sure how much comedy there is in it. I've not got very far with that one yet, but I'll press on with it. Um, I think, yeah, that's most of the things that have been going on. So holiday was our main thing. Um, so it's Friday today because we didn't get back till the early hours of the morning. I thought I'd have today off work as well. Um, so back into work next week and it's now September. So um, I am fully committed to being ready for autumn, despite the fact I'm sat here in a vest top. Um, I am ready for jumper season, so that's the other reason I need to crack on with my brother's jumper because I'm not letting myself cast on my hinterland until I have finished his. So I really do need to make myself do it so that mine is nice and ready to wear for winter. Um, yeah, life's just pressing on. I've got some cricket coming up this weekend. Um, nothing else major planned in terms of yarny things. I might try and fit in a trip to my favourite knitting cafe at some point. Um, so it's just a nice place to spend a couple of hours. I think that is, yeah, pretty much coming to the end. So as I said before, uh, please do subscribe to the channel. Please give it a thumbs up and do remember to leave a comment if you would like to win the copy of the fairground socks. Um, so these lovely uh, wiggly wiggly socks. They were just really fun and really enjoyable to knit. You don't have to use self-striping yarn, uh, but if you've got some in your stash, then it might be a, you know, no harm throwing your name in the ring for it, or throwing your hat in the ring, throwing your name in the, I don't know. Basically, leave me a comment. It can be absolutely anything. Um, and I will do a winner at random for the next episode. Until then, happy knitting. I hope you are enjoying what you're working on. And, um, yeah, I will see you next time. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.